Okay. When we last left off, mm-hmm. you guys were given leave from because you guys had successfully finished your mission. This is me. Uh, well, I'm really keeping it together. And then one of you remained back out in Amphibu. We we already okay. did a risk technically. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. So, uh, you were sent back to Scamino, uh, oh, separated hey. from your group. Did you figure out that thing? That thing? That thing that we talked about? About how I'm going to put that thing back where it came from or so help me? That thing. Don't, don't, don't. Yes. I, explain, I, explain. You figured that out? Good. I, well, I already knew. I just... Okay. I just don't want to reveal it yet. That's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, two of you decided to stay on Amphibu, leaving the group forever. Mm-hmm. Or as far as we know. For As far as we know. Well, it was you and Tasub. Remember, Tasub stayed. Tasub was like, I'm going to go home. I'm leaving my girlfriend to go home. <clears throat> what is it? Uh, it's a baby. And then you were sent to Scamino because you were separated from your small group. <coughs> Basically, you had to go back to science stuff. No, I'm... I was uh, about to say something, but it would have sounded horrible. I was choking on him, but... You okay. were... You would know all about that, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> so you went... You, you were basically put full-time in, as part of that unit, right? Uh, what unit? Basically the unit you were already kind of part of, but now it's a little bigger. Because now it's got more people. <coughs> oh, yeah. yeah the yeah, unit yeah. that Captain Captain Biggs. Yeah. Big Meat. Big Meat. Uh, Captain Mr. Big, Big Meat. Yeah. Captain Although, Big Meat. <coughs> captain Big Meat, not Mr. He's a captain. Mr. Thank you very captain much. Big Meat. How about that? That works. Well, that kind of takes away from the whole Captain Well, thing, Captain but... Mr. Big Meat. There you go. There we go. That'll work. Have to go uh, around five different blocks. Yep. You Captain were Mister Captain Mister. Uh, you were ba- put in as part of that unit, right? Okay. Because didn't Nick Blue talk about how they kind of needed more people in that unit? <coughs> Captain's <coughs> Captain Big Meets unit. Uh, sure, we'll go with that. I don't remember. Oh, uh, okay. I don't remember what happened yesterday, so. That's fair. Uh, you were made part of that. No, you just got paid and were allowed to leave. That's yeah. right, because you were you were you're a, you're a dick. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're too. Is his name oh. Richard? Well, no, I meant like a private <coughs> uh, detective. Mm. A detective for hire. <laughs> Is that why I call him dicks? Because it's a pi. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. Uh, Same here. You were allowed to go back to whatever political duties <laughs> you had. Which He's are none, because you're corrupt. He's a representative. One more time. You were allowed to go back to your political duties last <coughs> and last session. Duties. Yeah. <coughs> yep. His corrupt duties. Oh my god. <laughs> Is it the Taco Bell can or the solid kind? Um, no. <laughs> let's not get into that subject. Uh, let's yeah. bring it up. Uh, and our bounty hunter friend was on his way back to the bounty hunters league to figure out one, how much he can make <laughs> off of a one dead sci- blue uh, green coat scientist. Yes. And two, figure out if there's any new jobs. There probably aren't. It's very bad economy. You know, post war economy. Right, it sucks. <coughs> I mean, there's still for, people for the people. Want. Right. The politicians, it works out great. Right, because they're the only ones that profit. <laughs> Uh, and then, Anora, what, what did you decide, what, what do you think your character's been up to since, uh, staying? Probably furthering your help, your part of the tribe? Yep, probably. Uh, any, any specific goals you had in mind? Hmm? Uh, yes, I don't want to Basically, what about the unopened ones? Oh, okay, so you want to be like a, law, a guard, <laughs> okay. law enforcement. Yeah. Okay, so you've been made like a deputy. Thing. Yeah, I know. She's just making a funny joke. Since. Okay, I'm just being funny. Okay, just Do you want any of my nuts? All right. <laughs> so when we, la- when we last... Uh, when we started the campaign, it had only been a few weeks. since It had been like a week since the end of the Coat Wars. It has now been a month since the end of the Coat Wars. I have to clean the fire today. Okay. Uh, 
The capital planet of Vinsum has begun to return to a state of normalcy with the government restructuring for this time of peace. Hey, Josh, you left home. <laughs> uh, and you are all taking part in this re- restructuring in a different ways. Josh, uh, I'm going to need to see your bones. Nope. So let's go ahead and jump with uh, our bounty hunter friend for now. All right, what's he doing? So... Catching some bad guys. You've made it to Rip, uh, Rip Withers' office, and he, he uh, and it's been a co- it's been a week since you guys finished your op, and uh, so you've already been paid for that job. You got five five thousand notes for bringing the head. Uh, well, oh, he got them. Yeah, I was gonna say I got money. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I like bounty money. hunter. I want money. Uh, so, uh, our bounty hunter friend got 5,000 notes for bringing in proof of the death of... And he should totally share with people. To, of Trukla. Um, and you're, you're here to see what's, what, what's the new job. What's going on? Can I use that pencil? Well, no, you... He has, didn't call you in. I, I would assume you're just going to see if there's anything on the... In fact, one of the big things, the main reason you're going to his office is you, you've noticed the bounty boards that are usually posted have been kind of sp- sparse. Like, a lot of targets are just not there anymore? That, and there just aren't a lot of targets in general being added to the board. Well, that does make sense. Or... And the end of it's starting to wrap up so easily. Yeah, almost all the war criminals are either killed already or brought have been brought to justice. In their own way. Alright. Um, uh hey there. So you've you've proven yourself worthy of uh, being part of the of the BHO. I certainly hope so. Uh, especially after your successful takedown of Trukla. Um, so, I trust you with some information that, uh, needs to be passed on about why we haven't been getting as many jobs lately. Alright. <laughs> why is that? I'm curious. Well, as you understand, the war's over. So, because of that, we don't have as many criminals being noticed, and... For the most part, the blue coat police departments have been doing well with handling any smaller petty crimes. Uh, no big smuggling rings or anything going on yet. Uh, obviously, this upswing could, this downswing for us could change into an upswing any moment. But we've also been contacted by the underworld about potentially doing jobs for them. Yeah, I've actually been receiving threats from the crime syndicates uh, to take some of their less than legal contracts for the league. Where do you stand on this matter? Well, I'm I'm a close friend with Nick Blue. I've known him since for since before the Coat Wars, and honestly, around the time of the Resistance. Um, and it's because of him that I have this position that I have today. But we might have to take those jobs just so we can have our people paid. But I, w- I would like you to go meet with one of the leaders of this syndicate and kind of discuss any terms. Sir, I would like to take the time to inform <laughs> <laughs> Where were you at? Am I coming in clear? Yeah. Yep. Would like to, for one small moment, ask you to look at me and try to see clearly do you think I am the best person for a negotiation matter? I think you're the best to represent the Bounty Hunters League. Oh, fuck. Uh, um, obviously, if she does, if she doesn't wish to work with our, 
basically, we need to make sure that she tries to keep things as legal as possible in the negotiation. All right. Um, if she if she tries to push for less than legal contracts, you can feel free to use whatever force you need. After all, I mean, after all, we might need to bring her in for an arrest anyways, potentially. Okay. Well. I'll try talking, but you know that's not my strong suit. Uh, of course. Um. He actually, um, reaches into a deposit box beneath his desk. And uh, pulls out a large amount of notes, uh, enough that when he places them on the desk, they make a louder thud than the pieces of paper normally would. Any reason you decide to slam money on the table? Uh, this is your payment. <laughs> what? If for this job or the other one? For this job, I need you to get. In fact. Let's just ignore working for her altogether. Let's just bring her to justice. I think that's the best track. All right. I procure, uh, I've already procured a ticket on public transport for you to travel in. That way you don't have to worry about finding any transportation. All right. Well, where am I headed? Uh, you are going to the planet of Harn. Uh, your contact, your target, is a Nymerian by the name of Sonora. Uh, what would it be to try and recognize that name? Uh, that would be a... Studied... I'm trying to decide if it's history or local. Either one. To recall something that's history. Yeah. Well... She's also not as historically important, though, so that's why. Not not history in the sense of like historical knowledge. History isn't like recalling. It's like a knowledge based thing. Well, because you could also argue if I had an underworld st stat, you could argue that. Oh, yeah. If, if it's like a contact thing, it's like oh, I know who could put me in touch with that yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. History uh, is the history as far as D and D. History is based uh, on the knowledge, so I need uh, kind of argued as like a recalling mechanic. Yeah, I need his sheet. If it's not here, it might be here. Let's see, that's Big Me, that's Tots, that's Slagna. So, no, I don't have it, so it might be over there, wherever he sat last time. Wait, my yep, that's his. You made it balance. Okay, so your local is ten. Do you want to go with that? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and somebody roll a d twenty for me. Let's see how roll it. A thirty. Okay, thirteen. Uh. Including the... Yeah, that's with the 10. She rolled a 3. Sorry. Um, so, you don't really recognize the name off the top of your head. You, you, you realize that she's probably important in some way, though. Alright, well... I'll drag her back here, kicking and screaming if I have to. Well, dead or alive works. Either way, you get what's in this box. And he actually hands you the box. <laughs> oh, boy. This is going to be an interesting... You love your job, don't couple you? ...couple of days. All right. Let's go ahead and jump to our politician. So, uh, because of the... Peace times now. It's about time that people started getting. How long has it been? Uh, since the last end of the last events, it's been a a week. 
damn, it's been too peaceful around here. We need to start another fucking war. Oh my god. It's been a whole damn week. So, actually, there's elections going on. Well, the uh-huh. talks of, there's an election going on for the senatorial office. Am I up for re-election? Uh, well, you're a representative, but you can run for the senatorial office if you wish. Um, it is for the office position of a man called Eric Larson, who was in charge of that office. But he's running for re- re-election, but somebody else is running against him as the major opponent. But you could always run, because there are no major parties right now. So am I running for office, or am I looking to get into this guy's administration? That's up to you. I don't follow. Uh, basically, but I'm not telling things. you what you should do. I'm basically so saying you have multiple options. So some Senate but positions are up for re-election. Yeah. I'm already in a position. You're in a representative in the, position the currently. Um, but you could always resign and take a senatorial, which pays more. Well, you run for the senatorial. You only resign if you win. Um, yeah. No, I don't think. No, no. Nope. Okay. Well, I'm perfectly well positioned for. Eric Larson has called you in for a meeting. Sure. Uh, uh, so when you enter Eric's office, uh, he greets you formally, stands up, uh, gives you a handshake. Uh, you walk into this office and you see a bright room with carpeting and a couch on the side. There's a desk in the central part of the room with a chair in both on both sides. Shit, this is where they do the porn tryouts. <laughs> uh, on the far side of that desk, you see uh, he's actually an interim senator because of all the because he's the he's basically took the place of the former senator who's now vice president. Okay. So that's why the re-election's occurring. Mm-hmm. Uh, he stands up. He he gave the handshake. Thank you for making your way all the making your way here to my office. Uh, I'll I know be, I'll do like I'm like two holes down. Well, uh, I know sometimes when men in your position can be busy. Please have a seat. Okay. I uh, and he sits down as well. Uh, I just needed to hear. I I just need you to hear me out. Uh, before you made any rash decisions about who you might potentially support in this election. Okay. Uh, so you're looking for my endorsement. Yes. Uh, the other uh, candidate is a woman by the name of Emily... Uh, <coughs> bless you. Bless you. By Emily Ironheart. Okay. Just so you know the two uh, people running. Uh, I'm the most likely winner of this, so I think it'll be in both of our best interests if you supported me. Uh, you see, if you do, I'll make sure you get very far once my term is up. And if you don't, well, you'll you'll see how much power I have when it comes to the super democracy. Okay, so this interim officer is running for the full seat. Yep. To just continue holding the seat even now. Yep. And he's basically uh, saying he, he, he'll bring you up with him if he wins. And so you we're doing support like him. A house of cards maneuver here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I need to know what I'm hitching my wagon to. Okay. Uh, do you want to know a little bit about both uh, of them? I've got some background information that you um, you probably would have. I, yeah. Let me get that. I'm gonna and then maybe use a charm roll follow up to get him to just lay his cards on the table. All right. Take well. So Eric Larson is a career politician. He's been very cold in debates so far, uh, but. Having been partnered with Holloman, the previous senator that held this position in the past, uh, he's picked up on dealing with issues that will not only help Pike side the planet he represents, uh, but the super democracy as a whole. On the other side of the fence, you got Emily Ironheart. Uh, she was born to the Ironheart family on Pike side, uh, well placed in life. Her family was known for their wealth, uh, gained from selling items that the Empire had stolen from its citizens during the Resistance War. Uh, the Iron Hearts were ruthless and still are with the current generation planning to take office. Uh, Emily, unlike her parents and grandparents, has mastered putting on an, a more innocent face and is the popular vote for Pikeside's next senator, as she claims to be for the people. I feel well, like from that description, I feel like I know who you're going to go with. <laughs> well, we'll see. All right, so that's the knowledge I have walking in. He says he wants my endorsement. And I'm like, okay. Uh, 
What exactly are you offering me? I'm offering a maybe helping you with your own senate with your own planet and getting your own senatorial seat come next time that your elections come up. As I'll probably be a very strong voice to help you. Um, I'm even willing to put down some money to help. Well, what kind of strings do you have in the voting block? I know some people that can ensure a victory. So he's basically... I'm not going to, I guess, kind of overkill you with some detail. No. Generation here. Uh, Basically, he's offering me, like, favorable positioning with a bunch of his, maybe, cohorts. Yeah, because he's got, you know... He knows people that knows people. Is my people. endorsement endorsement worth that much to him, though? Am I that well positioned in the house? It will look good on a on a as a people person's position because that's one of his problems. Is he's not he doesn't have an approachable image. He's seen as this cruel, cold man. So, but he's got good that, that ethics. This suggests then that oh, the people that God. voted for me, I do have that relationship with them. As far as You've been playing, yeah. Because if asking for my endorsement, basically what he's saying is, what I'm saying is, he's a likable guy, go for him. Yeah, exactly. He needs that likability. Whereas Emily doesn't need that. <laughs> She's got the likability. But she doesn't have the experience of an office. Well, I'll tell you what, I don't like the iron sides. <laughs> um, we've had issues in the past. And, uh, so I'll help you out. However, I myself am not seen as a quote-unquote approachable or likable person. But what I can get you with my endorsement is, uh, it'll help clear your image as a no-bullshit kind of politician. Uh, people that voted me in the office and who I think you can appeal to, uh, would be those types of people who just want to see the super-democracy work and work for them and not continue to be business as usual. So what we're going to do is uh, we need to put together a anti-establishment image for you. So perhaps it's best that they don't see you as a likable character. They just need to know that you'll get shit done. So what have been your accomplishments in the Senate so far? Uh, so far I've managed to help move that vote that you actually helped uh, move along a couple weeks back for the um, ensuring that we did not take the mineral. Remember that new mineral that came around? That that vote did successfully stop being pushed thanks okay. to him as well as your actions. So you from... supported my bills in the past? Yes. But what have you accomplished? Uh, personally, I haven't had a lot of time yet to really do what I my goals He's are. He's probably voted on a lot of shit, whether he realizes he thinks they're accomplishments or not. So what I'm going to tell him is like, okay, we need to look into your voting history uh, on various issues and try to see if we can put together a pattern of votes that you've been a part of that'll paint this anti-establishment yeah. image of you. So, so one of the things I, I can tell you right now, some a- stuff that will... Um, so he did recently vote on helping decrease the budget for the blue coats as a whole because now that the war's over, really just police action is... Damn, this democracy moves fast in a fucking week. Well, it's been a month since the war ended. I thought you said a week. A week since the last, the last, last event. Oh. Yeah. Since, you, since the last game. A month session. in game. A month since the war. Even that's still moving fast. Well. Shut up, I, Yeah. Just let it happen. I'm not trying to... No, no, no. Yeah. Caitlin says, yeah, yeah shut up. It's, it's no, I'm crazy fine. crazy efficient. Um, all right, so... So they've been pushing for that because so, cause they realize, well, we don't need to have as much money being spent on that. Uh, the other thing is a increase on the actual criminal, making sure criminals are dealt with. Let me ask you a question again real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you looking for? Are you actually looking to role play like a campaign type experience? Or is this just a tidbit into something else? This is a little of both. I'm wondering how much I should get invested in this. A little of both. Because if you want to go down that route, I'll do that. But I don't know if that's where you are expecting that to go entirely. Or if this is just like a part of something bigger. So I should all, I, I deal with this in like a, a little way my character would type situation. I'm just wondering how 
How detailed do I need to be with this? Um, how deep are we going with this? I haven't written too arc. deep. Okay. For this part. So we'll keep it fly. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, so uh, I'm guessing he gives you all the other details and any questions you have. He points to all his votes for you, so you know his voting records. Uh, yeah, I think we can work with this. I'm going to want to have a meeting with your campaign manager and find out uh, what your messaging is. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll lend you my hand. All right. And uh, loan me one. Sounds good. Thank you for uh, your support. more than that, fuck these trust fund babies. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to buy their democracy. <laughs> All right. Oh, she's more than a trust fund baby. Emily... Like I was explaining, her so her family, the background is kind of based on the old idea of, like, back in World War II, you know how you had people that would take the Jewish gold, like, the Nazi gold that it came out after they stole from the Jewish? Basically, her family inherited money that way. Gotcha. <laughs> so they're During like the Resistance War. The inheritors of stolen wealth? Yep. Okay. <laughs> We're going to repatriate that shit. <laughs> yeah, we are. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so after you leave his office, uh, you actually have a voicemail on your communicator. Okay. It is from a Nymerian named Sonora. And sh she greets is you. Is that her? No, no, no. Uh, Nymerian. Oh, that's right. We yeah, talked about this. We talked person? about last week. Yep. Just in passing? Yep. Okay. Uh, she calls you and says, hello, uh, representative. I uh, am, un it's unfortunate I missed my chance to call you, but I have heard through certain means that you, will, you plan to support Eric Larson for his senatorial run. What just happened? How do you know about this? She has this horses. Is a voicemail? Yeah, she has horses. She's got super sources. <clears throat> um, okay. I, I wish to meet I you on... Pause. And I open the door back to the senator's office. And I'm like, I changed my mind. <laughs> and then I press play and I see if the voicemail reflects that I changed my mind. Uh, I'm kidding. It was just yeah. voicemail. Um, I wish to meet you on my planet of Harn where I wish to discuss potentially helping fund in this campaign. Mm, not crazy about dark money. Hey, it will come from legitimate parts of the source, supposedly. We'll, we'll see. Because she owns what a casino. This? So this is a super democracy. What is this, a super super pack? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got a giga pack. All right. Let's uh, go check it out. And with the message, there is a ticket for the public transport to Harn. So you got free transport to the planet, if you wish, to go there. Uh, before I do anything, I'll discuss with my aides uh, what's going on and have them verify that the source is legitimate. Uh, and so, there will be proper security on the way. So okay. So probably in, won't use that ticket and just go by my own means. All right. Well, in, because of what we talked about last week, in the past you have had talks with Sonora, so you know who she is and you can trust her for the most part. Okay. Well, I'll just go with it then. Sure. Because of what we talked about last week. All right. Now to our scientists. Okay. You're in the pristine underwater lab on, on Scamino. The ocean life almost calming. Uh, when your work is interrupted by the blaring sound of the base's alarm going off. So are you going to continue working, or are you going to investigate? I'm going to investigate. All right. When you look to see what's going on, you see your fellow scientists running around screaming. It's then that you see a masked individual with a bow and arrow set. Uh, he fires at you and misses, running off. Boo! Attention all advice. We have a rogue bowman on the base. What are you doing? You can roll with one hand, and my hand down. I want to see if I can stealth and sneak around and see what he is doing, who this person is doing. So you want to sneakily follow? Yeah. 
Well, they ran off, so you're going to need to make a chase against him, uh, which isn't an actual check. I have to... It would be a one. acrobatics or athletics. Either one will work. Uh. Okay, reflex. Boo! Boo! Green arrow. It's loose on the base. Total? Yeah, because I have a zero on the modifier on the Okay, and I'm guessing you don't have acrobatics, so... Yeah. Uh, you are unable to keep up with him. He is out of sight at the moment. Okay. What is the alarm saying, or are they just saying... It's just an alarm. It's just the... Pew. Pew. Yeah. So, uh... You, do you wish to make a perception check? Anything? Because yeah. you could always look around to see if you can find any tracks to catch up. I mean, there's not a lot of places to go. It's a closed facility that's underwater. Yeah, I'm going to make a How do we get in it? Hmm? It's a closed facility. Well, well there's, there's, a, there's a way to Dude, the top. You totally had a yes, snorkel make an alertness check. Mm -hmm. the bow snorkeler. Like there's mm -hmm. snork bowler. There's like elevators that go to the okay. upper I mean, I levels. Yes. Did he just get like snorkel down there into like the water hatch or something? Yep. Exactly. Thirteen, sixteen. Sixteen. All right, and that's total. Yep. All right. So, uh, you notice that the shot that missed you had actually uh, hit a window, and that window is cracked slightly. Oh, wait, you're a retinotion, right? You have web sending abilities. You can quick repair, but that would be a waste of your powers. Also, water pressure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But wouldn't the web kind of... The web isn't strong enough for water pressure. Yeah. Not at these levels. Right. Okay, I'll make a... Run. Engineering check. Okay. You can have to roll 20. Uh, you also, um... You also do know, remember that there's an elevator to get out in case of worst case scenario. I like an engineering check. Crap. You can use my D20. No. Okay. okay. So you're going to try to fix this window? With is that your goal? Of my, my goal is to see if I can fix it. Okay. She wants to continue her research. Just so you know, there's, just so you know there's water leaking at this point. Make the roll. Yeah, just make the roll. <laughs> She's deciding whether to say F it and run or... Try yeah, to that's... Say. Yeah, that's probably what's going through her head. Just roll, just if that's roll. what you want to do. Just roll. Use it. You're, roll the dash. You're, yeah, but I'll lose... Dash, yeah, but there's a chance that I'll lose the papers. And stuff, unless I keep, kept them on me. I assume you kept them on you. Okay. Unless you, you told me otherwise. No. Then roll. roll the dice. We'll see what number it lands on. And we'll go from and there. And then we'll add the modifiers. And then we'll know. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Because I think you're overthinking. 18. Alright. Plus what modifiers? 18 and I already... And I have a rank... Nine in engineering. All right. So from what you can tell... 27. 27. What you can tell is that because this is underwater and there's not the supplies to do a in the base repair immediately at the moment, while it is feasible to fix it, you do not have the time to do so. Look I go and book the, it. I'll go up the elevator. Okay. Look it and book it. So, yep. Uh, so, after you get out of the elevator, you reach the higher levels. Uh, do you wish to try to continue your search for the super or just try to make a way out of here? That's why the super ran. Stop. Sorry. Or... 
I shouldn't have said the super, but the, uh... The bowman. The bowman. So are you going to try to look for him? Yeah. All right. Give me a perception. Three. Uh, you're unable to see him at first, but when you finally do see him, uh, you see that he's in a ship flying away from the base. Okay, I'll go back to my research. You mean Bowman in has the, escaped in the, from the base. Oh yeah, I, I'm in the saying, flooded facility. No, I don't. I'm saying, well, since I haven't rolled yet for this, I have to roll for this. I am going to see about that um, diary. See what I can like decode out of it. Oh, I assumed you would have done that within the week. Ooh, of... yeah. yeah, everything okay. you basically researched through. Yeah, you you you've had a week. You've had a week to go through it. Okay. So did I learn anything from it or anything, or is it just her diary? It's her diary, as well as some notes on how she was planning to mix those two things that I gave you. Oh, and give it to somebody at some point. Uh, that's why in that personal letter she wrote to you, she wants you to do it, since she cannot. Basically, you're her legacy. Okay. If you wish to be. Okay. <laughs> Did, in that time, that I figured out a way to short circuit the um the robotic parts of the green cups. Like, what do you mean? Basically, EMP grenade, kind of. Yeah, short circuit it where they like kind of shut down out momentarily of it. or free themselves. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're worried about the the control chip. Yeah. Well, she is. That's I'm what. Yeah. To yeah. To you're worried about the control chip yeah. and how to deactivate that. Yes. Well, it's only an issue if it's already in the green coat. Because obviously, when you're making a green coat, it's not in them. Yeah, I'm saying though. Oh, uh, for ones that already exist. Yeah. Well, there's not a lot of them left now after that mission. I know. I know. We need that's left. Uh, that's something that the notes would not have gone into. The notes were more about creating more of them, not about destroying them. Creation. Not Could I do an engineering check to see? I guess. I mean, if you could reroute the formulas and all that. Good, I want to do an engineering check. Okay. As you're focused on your engineering, you also notice that there's a communicator left. 18. Okay. Uh, you can kind of start to research on it. You'll, it'll take a while longer. Okay. You might not want to do that in the wide open with a bow man running around. I, I'm saying as... The facility's flooded. I know I can't you, do anything. I'm just saying from like the note and you, stuff. Well, even then, you're not in know, a lab to really... I know, I'm not in a lab. You so can't really like, focus on the notes. I can't, but the thing you is... People though, screaming, is, running around, people getting shot. Well, not anymore. He left. Point. Although he got what he wanted. <laughs> to destroy the base? Uh. Oh yeah, because it's as simple as that when it comes to breaking into a science facility. You don't plant a bomb on the outside. You don't hit it with a torpedo. You, you just hit the window with that. an error. You just break in with a snorkel and shoot the glass window from the inside. That's... <laughs> That's how you, how do, you it. do it. That's ten out of ten. I think, I, think, I think that he was trying to kill me to get the super formula and everything on me. Uh, well, yeah, you do notice, the yeah, there's a communicator that was left behind by the escapee. I pick up the communicator. All right. Uh, give me a technology check. Technology. Knowledge. Natural 20, 24 total. All right. So, you're able to hack into this, uh, pri like, extra-secured communicator, and you're able to figure out that this was somebody who was hired by a l crime lord on the planet of Harn named Sonora. Okay. Plots intertwined. Okay. 
and because of the damage below, the head scientist comes out and is like, Alright, we're going to need a few days to repair the base. Again. Uh... Again. And then somewhere a dude flips over a three and turns it back to a zero on days since invaded by a bowman. <laughs> well, this isn't the first time the base has been flooded by a super. Day since flooded, day zero. Uh, like almost a year. Why, and why then it... did why is that underwater in the first place? Actually, it's going to be a few weeks because the base is flooded. I'm saying, why is it underwater in the first place? More secure when you think it's, about it. It's, it, it's a water planet. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Not a lot of options when you decide to build a base on a water planet. Good point. Thanks. But it, you either have it float and be out in the open or underwater. And, and really the way they do it is they have like plat, a platform at, the t at like surface level. To keep it floating instead of sinking. And also to provide access to the base. Mm -hmm. And then beneath they have this whole so structure. It did also get off the platform because with it flooded, would it still maintain its buoyancy because of the extra weight? The the they build these as deep as they can. Okay. So uh, and there's multiple platforms, so. Okay, so yeah, it, I'm gonna just. So you're probably you're not you're not on the main platform. You're probably like on, a like a platform where all the ships are. Okay. It's been forever since I've Okay, well. So. Uh, and the head scientist is like, so do you wish to investigate what happened here? We need somebody to investigate. Yeah, I, it's a good idea if I do. By the way, I have a question. During this week, was I able to do any work on, like, Super Formula, like, recreating it and stuff like that? Well, you already have a vial make, of it. Yeah. But she wants to recreate it I and make money. I want, I want to make multiple. All right. What uh, else did I give you? Just remind me. It's I have been a while. Let us continue her legacy for every biggest failure. Yep. A. I remember that part. Uh, yeah, I, I know um, the vial. The vial, and then, um, I eventually got her diary. I thought there was something else. Let me check. I thought there were three things. Wait, the letter, formula, diary. Well, I thought there was, like, three things I gave her before she got the diary. Okay. No clue. Yeah, I can't remember either. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> I'm checking. Oh, how to create new green coats. Yeah, how to green, create green coats 2.0. Yeah, the 2.0s. Well, you can make your own green coats. Yeah, I don't... that's why, what the whole be my legacy or greatest but failure you note is about. them to be good green coats, not bad. Uh, if so, I'd want them to have free will. Yeah. Maybe not have people stuck inside. You know. Maybe make it yeah. fully robotic. Well, the 2.0s kind of require people inside. Well, then make them... They would basically have the extra armor when you think about it. Well, because the way the 2.0s work is... They're supposed to be injected with the super formula. And then put into the green coat suits. Oh, dear which God. Which means so they're super powered super green, green coats. Yeah. So, make the green coat without the formula. Make it be a 1.5. <laughs> Just tossing out ideas here. Green coat, 1.5. That was basically Trukla's final goal, was to make super green coats. Basically have an army and of bold. supers underneath our control. Yep. Confidence. Okay, that's a mad scientist. <laughs> Alright, anyways. Uh, Swagger. So did I end up making like a yeah, couple of vials of this? Stuff? Yeah, you have a couple because you've had the resources. Don't forget about okay, good. Oh, those are my abilities. Good. Uh, you're being provided with a fighter ship, so you can get to Harn as well. Pew pew. Good. Um. Well, uh, and you are to meet with blue coats that'll be in the area. Okay. That way you're gonna be covered. Hey everyone, thank you for checking out the video. If you enjoyed what you just saw, be sure to give us a like, comment, and subscribe. If you don't want to miss any of our content, be sure to hit the bell icon where you will be notified anytime we upload a video. 
Also, if you wish to watch RPG Workshop live, you can follow Studio Bastion on Twitch. There, you can also enjoy his gameplay live streams and other podcasts that are in production. Also, if you like what we're doing here at Escape Reality Films, be sure to check out our Patreon and support us, and get some cool rewards in return.